Good morning, guys. So we're here to start with um, part three of our jack-o'-lantern assignment. And this is the part where we're going to go ahead and paddle and put it into shape and add our lines to it so it starts to look more like a jack-o'-lantern. So uh, if you saw part two, that was where we joined the two pieces together. Um, we put a coil around the seam. We worked on blending it, scraping it, smoothing it and then we bagged it up for a day to give it the seam and the two pinch pots a chance to really join. So at this point, when we paddle, we're looking to get a wood board. A piece of trim molding, could be uh, a plastic ruler, could be um, a wooden ruler, could be a yard stick. But the trim molding I like best because it's got a little more weight behind it. And you want something that's an inch and a half or two inches wide, not too narrow. And what we're going to do is just lightly tap on the clay. And we're going to tap it from the top down, and we're looking to really round this off. And as we tap it, it will compress the clay a little bit and thicken it up, um, but um, shouldn't be too bad. But we just want to round it and give it a nice rounded shape. Um, it's easier to do this now before we put the lines in it. So when you tap it, just tap lightly, okay, and work from the top down the side. Um, don't smack it real hard because that may cause it to split open or put a big dent in it if you hit it wrong. And make sure you're not using the edge. If you use the edge and you catch it with the edge, you're going to end up putting a big gash into it. Um, so just basically hold it up, start at one end, and just lightly tap it and round it down into the shape that you want. If you made Um, short wide pinch pots you're gonna come out with a more rounded pumpkin if you made taller pinch pots then you're gonna have a taller shape a taller rounded circle for your jack-o'-lantern either one is fine but if it's real tall don't go smashing on it with the, the paddle here to try and make it short okay it's just because you made taller pinch pots and a taller pinch pot is gonna give you a little more space to make your jack-o'-lantern face or your jack-o'-lantern design. So we want to round it off until we're happy with the look of it. And we're going to round off the other end as well. One side we will flatten, but we want it to flatten, um, round into a flatness um, so that it looks organic, it looks natural. We don't want it to just all of a sudden go to like a flat edge where it looks kind of like the end of a barrel or a can. And again, we're just rounding it down into the shape we want, tapping it lightly. Sometimes it taps nice and easily and you can get the shape you want quite, quite quickly. Other times, you have to work with it a little bit. Sometimes the clay can, um, in a sense, be stubborn or not quite give you the shape you want. And sometimes you have to alter what you had your, in your vision. And sometimes you just have to work with it a little bit more. Um, but do just keep working with it. Round it into the shape you want. Tap it out. You can tap the edge a little bit where the seam was as well if you need to. Um, and just really look at the side or the edge, um, almost like a profile line or a silhouette, um, an outline. We're looking to see that it has a nice continuous flow, not any big bulges or bumps sticking out. Um, that lets us know we have a nice rounded shape. Once you've done that and you're content with it, then look at both sides, top, bottom, either way, and decide which one you like best um, in terms of being your top. And so I think I'm liking this end a little bit better. Don't know why, it just has a little bit more rounded look to it to me. So I'm gonna make that my top. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go back, check it again, and if I need to touch it up any, I will. Um, I think I'm fairly happy with that. And we'll, so we'll move on. So at this point, we want to flatten off what's going to be our bottom. So we're just going to stand up here, try and make sure we have it straight up and down. And we're just going to tap it on our board. We want to make sure it has a stable bottom so that it doesn't wobble all around. Um, there was a kid's toy a while back called Weebles Wobble, But They Don't Fall Down. So we don't want this wobbling around because otherwise if you're moving it around or I've got it on the cart wheeling it out to the kiln, 
If it's wobbling everywhere, it's liable to fall over and get damaged. So the more stable it is, the better. So once we've done that, we can go back with our card and we can just double check and see if there's anything we want to smooth out or clean up. Now when we scrape with the card, the card is taking off little bits of clay. So clean that little bit of clay off every time you swipe with the card. Otherwise, when you go to touch the project with the card again, that clay is going to stick back onto your project. And so we don't want that to happen. So keep cleaning it off as you swipe it. And again, it's not pushing hard, but we're just swiping it to try and clean things up, to smooth them out. It's easier to do it now than after we've put the little ridges into it. Okay, so then what I like to do is go ahead and take my sponge and sponge over the entire surface just to give it a little extra moisture so that when I go to impress into it to make our little lines or ridges um, to give it the pumpkin shape, hopefully it's a little bit softer, a little bit easier to work with. And when I sponge it, I don't want it, the sponge to be sopping wet, um, but I do want it to have some moisture into it so it goes into the clay. And I just basically go up and down and back and forth all the way around, just trying to get a little more moisture into the clay so it's nice and soft, nice and pliable, so it'll impress easier. So when we go to impress, the tool I like to use the most is the wooden rib tool. Now I know because we're doing this at a distance you may not have access to the wooden rib tool. So if you do have a wooden rib tool um, you can use the straight side or the curved side. Either one is fine. Um, if you don't have the wooden rib tool you might try your ID card or an old gift card. Their edges are a little thinner and a little sharper and so I would be careful as you roll it as I'm going to show you here because you don't want to cut through your project. Um, you might find that if you've got something like a plastic ruler with more of a rounded edge, that would work well, or maybe even a wooden roller. Um, it doesn't have a rounded edge. If it has edges, just be careful that um, you do it slowly so that hopefully it doesn't puncture through, okay? Um, so then what we're gonna do is take that edge and I'll stand up here because I think it might be easier to, for you to see and you're going to start at one side doesn't matter where you're going to take the rib tool like I say you can use the straight edge you can use the rounded edge and you're going to set it here against your project and you're going to press in and roll up okay and as you press in and roll up it will hopefully impress that line into your clay. Now, it's usually better to try and impress it in and roll it than to just drag it. If you drag it, it tends to just draw a line and then it looks more like a basketball instead of a squash or a pumpkin. So once you do one side, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn and we're gonna come from the other side to meet it. So basically, we're splitting it in half. just carefully do that pressing it in. We can always go back and press it in more once we get everything established um, and that'll accentuate the, the look of a pumpkin. Um, but to start with just get them in place first and down at the bottom it doesn't get all the way so later I will go back and roll this the opposite direction so that it actually goes down underneath into the bottom. Not all the way but just enough so it gives the illusion that we're rolling it all the way down into the bottom. Okay, so now that we've kind of done it in halves, we're gonna go ahead and do it here from each side and basically quarter it. So I will go and start that line and press in. And again, just roll and impress it in. And it doesn't have to be too deep to start with. So I'll turn it, come from the other side. And if it's not exactly in half, it's not going to be a big problem. Just match it up with the other line as best you can. 
Pumpkins aren't perfect when you go buy them, so ours doesn't have to be exactly perfect either. Okay, so now that we've quartered it, we'll go ahead and split each of these sections and so that we have eight sections. So again, just kind of eyeball where you think the halfway point is in each section and roll it up to the middle. Now, sometimes as you do this, especially when you get around to the last couple, um, you might get areas that look like the clay is cracking. And sometimes it does crack, and sometimes it's just kind of little stretch marks. If it does crack and it does split open, what you can do is take some of your slip and paint it in where it cracked or split open, and then you can just press it back together. Um, but for the most part, if you left your pinch pots, the quarter of an inch in thickness, they should be fine so that it doesn't split open or crack on you. So again, I'm just starting at the bottom and I'm rolling up the outside edge. I know it's probably hard to see. Um, I'll try to do this one over here. And basically, just start with your tool and press in and roll up the outside edge over the top and into the middle. So again, you'll have those eight sections. And then like I say, for each one of those, go ahead and roll it on down into the bottom. You don't have to roll it all the way into the middle. In fact, I kind of prefer that you don't so that you have a flat space there. And if it does get fired and it does get glazed, then there's kind of it makes it easier to clean the glaze off the bottom and easier for a flat place to put your name in the period and also less chance of the glaze in running down the crack here um, the ridge line and into the bottom surface where it will cause it to stick to the kiln shelf okay so that would be our basic start so now at this point I like to go back and take my sponge and again, I squeeze most of the water out of the sponge, and then I sponge right where I did that line. And what it does is it softens the edge, and it gives it a little more natural, organic look. And I will go around and do that on the entire pumpkin. Then I will go back with my tool and slightly roll and impress back into it, and at this point, Sometimes I'll do a little more dragging with it, kind of draw that line back in there. But if you do go ahead and sponge that, it will soften it and just give it a little more of an organic look. Sometimes you have to really squeeze your sponge down to get it in that crevice or that crack. But as you go back over it and you press back into it and the clay is softer now and it's kind of got a memory and it's remembering where it wants to go, that will go ahead and let you make a little bit deeper indentation so that it will accentuate the look of a pumpkin. Okay, and again, if it starts to get a little cracked, this is where you can just lightly drag your tool, or if you need to, you can paint some slip in there and just gently push it back together. And I would just continue to work to do this all the way around my pumpkin. And it takes a little time and a little effort, but it really pays off and starts to give it a super nice look to where it starts to actually look like a squash or a pumpkin, okay? So I will continue to work on this all the way around. Once I get it all finished, then we're gonna go ahead and put a stem on it. Um, and that stem is gonna not only help it look like a pumpkin, but it's gonna serve as a lid for our jack-o'-lantern. So you're going to take a little bit of clay, and it doesn't take much. You can put that into a ball, and then you can go ahead, and if you want it to be, we'll start off this way. You put it between your hands, and you're going to roll back and forth. As you roll back and forth, kind of 
angle your hands out. It'll bring the tip of it up into more of a cone shape. Set this over here, maybe it helps you see better. Bring it up into like a cone shape. Then you can take it on your board and you can roll at it, roll it at an angle, and it's going to bring that more up into a cone shape and it's going to be tapered. So then you can take your knife and you can cut off the little bit of excess at the end. We don't need it to be real long, we don't need it to be real thick and bulky. And you can tap that down on your board, okay? And it's okay if this twists and bends. Now if you want it to be kind of gnarled and twisted, you can twist and work with it some more. If you want it to be more like somebody cut it right off the vine, you can just give it a nice cut and put it into the shape you want. Now sometimes, um, if you look at them, they've got little ridges. And so you can take a tool, end of a paintbrush, a needle tool, and you can press in and make those little ridges and decorate it up however you want it. Okay? Then what you'll do is you'll crosshatch the top of your pumpkin. Okay? You'll crosshatch the bottom of this. You'll paint both of them with lots of slip. And then you'll go ahead and you'll set this on top and push it together real well. Now the slip will ooze out a little bit. You can just take your tip of your um, tool or your sponge and go in there and just clean it back up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place a bag over this and let it hang out and start to get dry. We want it to get what we call leather hard. And leather hard basically is like a halfway drying point. And normally we wouldn't let things dry out um, because we're recycling the clay in this circumstance of distance learning. But for this one, we're going to let it dry so we can cut it out better. Um, so when it's leather hard, it's going to feel like, I've heard it described as a firm piece of cheese. So it should be that kind of dryness and firmness so that it cuts easily. If the clay starts turning a different color, chalky white, you've let it dry too much and it's going to be very difficult to cut. It'll probably um, crack or break on you. If it's too soft, when you cut the lid, it's not going to hold its shape and then your lid's not going to match up nicely. So we want to let it dry just a little bit. So what I like to do, instead of sliding it in my bag sideways, I take the bag and I squish down my bag, similar to this, and then I just set it on a board or on a plastic lid. I've been putting mine on lids lately. And then I will go ahead and basically drape it right over the top and leave it puffed up like this. That way it's not going to mess up my stem or any of the work I've done, it's got enough air inside that it will start to dry. Now depending on your conditions outside, it might take it a day, two days, three days to get leather hard. You want to check it every day. So while it's drying, um, then uh, we can be working on other things or we can be working on some sketches to come up with our design that we want to put on our jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so that's it for today, and when this gets leather hard, then I will be coming back probably for the last part of the video and showing you how we cut it open, we take out the newspaper, we clean it up, we do cut out our face, um, we do all the finishing work. Um, so we'll either do that in one or two more videos, and we'll just take it a little at a time. But for now, you just have to be patient and wait for it to dry. Don't try to speed it up, just let it happen naturally. It makes it much easier. Okay, have a great day. See you guys in the next one.